kids. It's so great to be here with you today. We have such an exciting episode in store for you today. Today is one week until our last episode, so make sure you pay attention, and most of all, learn something from our story today. That's right, kids. Our story this morning shows us that the gospel is not for just certain people, but it is for everyone, every single one of you. Please, take a seat, and we're just getting started. Hi, Jenna. I have something to talk to you about. What's going on, Jovi? Well, I won't be coming to Sunday school anymore. Jovi, why not? You come every single week. Yeah, I made a mistake and now I don't deserve to come to hear the gospel. Jovi, honey, that's not how it works, but why don't you explain to me what happened? Well, I stole a loony from my brother's room and that makes me a stealer and I can't um, come to church anymore because I don't deserve to hear what Jesus did. Oh, you know, Jovi, that's not how it works, but I think that's uh, why we'd want you here even more. And there's actually a story that I wanted to show you that has to do with this. It's, uh, it's about how everyone deserves to hear the gospel, no matter who you are, where you're from, or what you've done. No matter what mistakes you've made, everyone deserves. This is a story about Peter and Cornelius. So you mean that I can still come to church and hear the gospel even if I made a mistake? That's pretty cool, and I'd love to hear that story. Absolutely, Jovi. Well, why don't we look towards the screen and watch this video, because it describes perfectly how we want you here. Cornelius was an officer in the Roman army who lived in Caesarea. He and everyone in his house worshiped God. Cornelius helped other people and he always prayed to God. One afternoon, Cornelius saw an angel of God in a vision which frightened him. The angel said to him, God has heard your prayers and he has seen how you help others. Then the angel told Cornelius to send for a man named Peter, who was in the city of Joppa. So Cornelius sent two of his servants and one soldier to Joppa. The next day, as the servants and the soldier were nearing the city, Peter went up on the roof of the house to pray. Peter saw a vision of something like a large sheet coming down from heaven. In the sheet were all kinds of animals, reptiles, and birds. A voice said to him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter said. I have never eaten anything that is unclean or not used for food. Again, a voice said to him, God has made these clean. Do not call them unclean. This happened three times, and then the whole thing was taken up into heaven. Peter tried to understand what the vision meant. Then Cornelius' men arrived at the gate. They explained that Cornelius had seen a vision, and an angel instructed him to send for Peter. So the next day, Peter went with the men to Caesarea. When Peter got to Cornelius' house, he explained to Cornelius that God does not consider some people to be better than others. God had sent good news to the Israelites. Jesus is the Lord of all. Peter said, everyone who believes in Jesus will have their sins forgiven. As Peter said this, the Holy Spirit came down on those who heard the message, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles or non-Jews too. The Jewish believers were amazed. Cornelius, his friends, and his relatives were baptized in the name of Jesus, and Peter stayed with them for a few days. God showed Peter that just as there is no clean or unclean food in Christ, there are no clean and unclean people. God calls believers to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they are or where they come from. Jesus is the Lord of all.
Cornelius was an officer in the Roman army. The Roman army was known for treating the local people, especially the Jews, poorly. Cornelius, however, was different. He was a believer in the one true God and was known for how kindly he treated the Jews. Cornelius believed in God, but he did not follow the customs and the traditions of the Jewish people, including following their beliefs about clean and unclean foods. Normally, a Jewish man like Peter would never be seen with a foreign man like Cornelius. But God brought Peter and Cornelius together to encourage Cornelius to believe the gospel and to teach Peter that the gospel is for all people. What is the gospel? The gospel is good news that God sent his son, Jesus, into the world to rescue sinners. As Peter preached to the Gentile people who had gathered with Cornelius, the Holy Spirit came down, not only on the Jewish people, but also on the Gentiles. This amazed all the Jewish believers and confirmed the message of Peter's vision that the gospel is for everyone. God doesn't show favoritism or reject or restrict anyone because of their personal ethnicity or nationality. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Lydia from Greenbrier, Arkansas asks, I get along with some people better than others. How am I supposed to not show favoritism? Lady, that is a great question. And I think the first thing we have to understand is this. It's okay to get along with some people more than other people. It's okay to have some friends that you're closer with and uh, spend more time with. That is totally normal. If you look in the Bible, Jesus even did that. He spent more time with his 12 disciples. He spent more time with three of those disciples in particular, and he had some other really close friends. So there's nothing at all, all wrong with that. Here's what we have to be careful of. It's not showing favoritism toward people. What is favoritism? It's treating people differently. So if you treat people poorly because they're not some of your closest friends, then that would be wrong. That's what we see in our Bible story today, that God does not show favoritism. He treats everybody the same. He loves everybody. And that's what we wanna do as well. We want to be at a point where we have some closer friends, nothing wrong with that again, but we love everybody, we're kind to everybody, we want everybody to know Jesus, and we respect everybody. That's how we can not show favoritism to people around us. So here's a question back for you. How do you feel knowing that God does not show favoritism? starting. So I'm going to read it now for you and we're going to put it up on the screen so you can see it once before we start our game. Are you ready? Here we go. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16 31. Awesome. Okay, so that is our verse for the month. Remember it and let's see who can have it memorized by the end of the four weeks. For our game today, I'm gonna to use these little skewers and we're gonna use them as chopsticks, picking up noodles one by one, which is much harder as you think. I have 30 seconds to do this and however many noodles I can get in Jovi's hand by the end of the 30 seconds is how many words we will take out of the verse. All right, so we're gonna start the timer. I'll start it. Ready? Go. One. One at a time. <laughs> One at a time, right? It's harder than it looks. Ooh. Oh. 18 seconds. Oh, no. Okay, I think there I got go. another one. Perfect. Two. I'm really bad at using these. Three. Three. There you go. Oh. Oh. That was close. There you go. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. And, all right. That's the end of the 30 seconds. There's so, three. I got three out. We're going to take three words out of the verse. Read it with me now, kids. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice, and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16:31. Awesome. So now Joby's going to give right. it a go, and I'm going to start 30 seconds now. Okay. 
I'm really bad at these. Oh! <laughs> One. One. It's like they're slippery or something. Yeah. I think the table's a bit slippery too. Oh, I guess I can't move my hands. <laughs> that was a little bit of a cheat. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Perfect, three. One more, one more, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, okay. So we're gonna take three more words out of the verse, so a total of six will be removed. Joby's gonna read it for you now. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice, and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16, 31. All right, kids, last round. Let's see if we can get more than three out of the verse. All right, ready? Three. Go. <laughs> Okay, I actually need to like change my hands around. Go for like the bigger group, because I feel oh, like there it's... Yeah. There's more options. Oh, yeah. two, I'm on a roll. Three. <laughs> you got it. Four. Go. Okay, so we're beating our first time. Just squeeze them harder. And when I squeeze them harder though, they fumble. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna pop me in the eye. Oh, yeah. that's okay. Okay, so we did, we got four out this time. Awesome, so we're gonna take four more words out of the verse for a total of 10 words removed. Read it with me now. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16, 31. All right, great job kids, that was awesome. Uh, totally fun. So you can try this at home, literally with any, if you have chopsticks at home, if you have skewers at home, just grab some pasta noodles. I'm sure you all will be better than me and Jovi. Um, right now, I want you to grab your Bibles and meet back here in just a minute. Bibles, let's turn to 2 Corinthians 9.15 and read what it says. Let us thank God for his priceless gift. God's indescribable gift is his son Jesus, whom he gave us as a sacrifice for our sins. Without Jesus, we would all be lost in our sins and without hope. Let's praise the Lord for his gift of salvation that he offers to everyone.
The Lord reigns. This truth should make your heart glad. He is in the control of everything and rules over all people. The gospel is for all people, and salvation is a free gift of God to all those who believe in him. The Bible says that one day, people from every tongue, tribe, and nation will proclaim together that the Lord reigns as they worship at the throne of God. Let's pray as we go. Lord, before time even began, you knew that we would need a savior. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our rescuer and the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Thank you that salvation is not a result of our works, but is only because of what Jesus has done. We praise you for the gift of salvation you offer to all who believe in you. Amen.